thanks for tuning in. Just a quick update that the full episodes of the Rant Cafe podcast can be found for free on Spotify, which is linked in the description below. But for now, let's just jump into the meat and potatoes of this highlight. So, Nux, how do you want to do this? How do you want to do this? Oh, so I was thinking we could just start at his number one and work our way down to his number 75. Like, first we'll talk about his S tiers and then... uh, and that, that's how I figured we'd do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for whatever. Sure. Hell yeah. So, we are first in S tier. Helsing Ultimate is your first S tier. Yeah, that shit is just so flashy and just so enjoyable. Again, it's not perfect. It's very, very far from perfect. But, I mean, each of those movies, like the all of them really, just so fucking good. I mean, I would give the Helsing Ultimate a bridge in S tier. Yeah, it's like it's just so good. Like even the abridged is great. Yeah, I, I mean, I like the original more than the abridged. Although the abridged was good, but S tier. Yeah, like, it's great, goofy fun. They're hunting Nazis, fucking vampires and shit. Like it's so fun. <laughs> I mean, I respect it, but at the same time, it's like you're putting it next to one of my favorite anime and Animax favorite anime. Uh, Gurren Lagann is your next ten mm. out of ten. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of variety here in your S tier. You go from like Helsing Ultimate to Gurren Lagan to Afro Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's not like you don't have a specific taste. If which is wacky. It's like you have Angel Beats as a ten out of ten also. Which I don't understand. But Animac likes Angel Beats. Yeah, I do. I like it a lot. It was in my top twenty, but it was number twenty. I, it's, admittedly, I haven't seen Angel Beats since, I think, freshman year of college. So it's been a long time. I just know I really liked it when it uh, aired. So what what did you yeah. like about it? Did you like the sad scene at the end or like the comedy scenes in the beginning? Or just the- um, I'm, So I'm not a big slice of life guy, which you probably know just by looking at the list. So the, it's not really like the comedy slice of life shit that I was super into. I just really started to enjoy the characters. Uh, and I liked, you know, the romance that was blooming. And then the ending, I thought, was that very bittersweet kind of optimistic but still sad kind of ending. I just really appreciated the whole journey getting there. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, even the setting is so cool. It's like a high school, yeah. but it's not. Purgatory. High school yeah. purgatory. Mm-hmm. Well, that's I what, mean, the whole the whole ending school. reveal and, like, even just, like, the music that went along with it was so well done. But I think kind of the, the road to get there was definitely not S tier. Like, the characters, I'm not a big fan. Well, I mean, it's fair. I, I just really I, I like. I like how the symbolism behind how high school really secretly is purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that the comedy parts in the beginning were great. Like there was this one uh, moment that they're all trying to avoid. They're, they're trying to cheat on a test, so they're trying to you know do something in the class as a distraction, so that one of them can change the test papers. And one guy gets up and like throws off his clothes. And no one looks at him in the class, so, like, the distraction does not work. So then they rocket launch (laughs) his chair into the ceiling. All right. And then they do that same thing for, like, five people in a row. They each try something crazy, and no one pays attention. Like, the comedy's good. I must say, I do not remember a single thing you said, man. (laughs) Dope. (laughs) I remember. Hell yeah! All right, you also have Cashern Sins. Have any of you seen that? No, I've no. never seen. I never heard of this. That is the biggest sleeper hit in all of anime. It's a, I believe it's Madhouse, and it is super stylish and it's very similar to Near Automata in terms of like its themes. It gets across really dark and heavy themes, and I think it does it beautifully. It looks unlike pretty much any other anime I've seen. It's very dystopian, but also like colorful at times. I don't know. It's hard to describe. And it just tells like a really haunting tale about robots who were once immortal that are now struggling to come to terms with their imminent death because of a ruin, a plague that is sweeping all of robot kind. So it's like the sequel to Skynet. I mean, yeah, you can definitely look at it like (laughs) Skynet if they ran out of cum to power themselves. (laughs) Did I uh, did I miss it? You skipped over Code Geass, Nux. Yeah, I'm. You know, I'm a, it has to flow into the okay, next one. Okay, okay. It has to flow. There's an artistic side to this. But also, Code Geass, much respect. I know it's your favorite anime, no? 
Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely up there. I think it's probably still my favorite. I, I can still watch that show pretty much over and over again and enjoy the shit out of it. Yeah, I love yeah. Cookie Hat so much. I think we're all on the same page there. Yeah, I think we all put it in S tier, right? Mm, yeah, sure. except you guys like Death Note more. No, I don't. I do. I don't. I, if Death Note ended after the first half, I think it'd definitely be up there. It's just it takes a bit of a dive in the second half, in my opinion. Uh, I completely agree. I think the ending of Death Note is good, but those last like 20 mm-hmm. episodes after uh, a certain man dies, it definitely went downhill. 12 episodes. 100%. 12 episodes? Okay. That's yeah. not, that's not too bad. Like, it felt I'm like just, 20, though. I'm just such a character-driven person, and I feel like I like the characters in Death Note more than Code Geass. Like, I love Lelouch, but, like, Suzaku could fuck off, and who else was there? No one. <laughs> well, yeah. There were, there were mean, a lot of great characters. You're I, just going to do my boy oh, Jeremiah yeah. Gottwald like that? Yo, I am going to do Jeremiah Gottwald like that. <laughs> who the hell is he? How could you do Jeremiah? <laughs> you don't remember the great Jeremiah Dude, Gottwald? I'm Goldfish like, Briggs. You think I can on. remember anything that I've watched, like, if I haven't watched it within a year? Get out of here. Dude, Charlie, Dude, are you with me? Boy. Are you with me that Valletta is one of the most underrated waifus in anime? <laughs> you know, am, I'm not a huge not waifu page. guy, but I'll I'll say I'll go with yes on that just for the sake of it. <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot to me, man, because people undervalue my girl Valletta, but you know she blossoms into a beautiful, beautiful wife. Did she do things in Code Geass? Yes. Everyone does things in Code <laughs> Geass. Even even Code Rolo. Geass. Even when Rolo was Rolo was, dude, yes. Yeah, I thought he was great. Like, he got so much shit from the community for some reason, but I thought he was, like, a really fucking great character. Used by Lelouch, but still, you know, trying his best to ignore it. Like, oh, no, I see the real you, even though he's, like, just blatantly being used. Like, it's it's really good. Yes, and, like, Lelouch turns his insecurities against him to make him, like, a puppet, sort of. And even at the... the end of Rolo's story, without spoiling too much, like, Lelouch lies to him at the very end, but, like, selflessly. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Rolo's a great character, even though... Yeah. Yeah, I liked a lot of the characters. The two I really don't like are Suzaku and um, Nina Einstein. Well, I like Suzaku, but I don't like Nina. Nina's horrible. I don't think Suzaku's a bad character, but I definitely don't like him. I, I like him, like adequately i Mm -hmm. i wouldn't say he's one of my favorite characters you know who i like i like the earl of pudding (laughs) yeah my boy and in the dub they do an amazing job with him god what was his actual name lloyd (laughs) lloyd thank you i had to look it up because i couldn't remember it either it's lloyd thank you he's great he's just kind of like a guy that's there wanting to do his thing and, and he wants nothing to do with this whole power play bullshit that's going on around him he's just like i'm a scientist I want to do my thing, and, and he also I just has to tolerate some... everyone else. Yeah, yeah, he also has some like amazing lines throughout the show. Just uh, yeah, every he just... time he's on screen, it's hilarious. I am a sociopath. I've been born with an abandoned heart, and that's why we're gonna kill everybody. <laughs> it's like a fit, dude. Yeah, I love. Logan. Yeah, he's kind of figured out the world. I get uh, from him. I get the vibe that he's kind of figured out that everything's a mess, and he just kind of rolls with it. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. I don't know. I love Code Geass. I love everything about Code Geass. Yeah, Especially for sure. Especially the ending. The I think the ending's the... an absolute classic. I'm going to try not to spoil anything, but I was watching a Trash Taste. They were talking about Code Geass, and like they all remembered really liking it, but I, I don't remember who pointed it out. Someone pointed out a scene I thought was really well done. It's in the middle where it's like a big turning point for Lelouch where he like cross. I'm sure you guys no. know. No, not Euphemia. Yeah, they're talking about that whole thing and how it came out of nowhere and that the writers seem to have written themselves in a corner. But I thought that was super well done because, like, an episode or two ago, CC was talking about how, like, the Gios can, like, go out of control with overuse and shit. Right, and, we, and we just met Mao, like, that dude that could read everyone's minds. And, like, the Gios took over. He started, you know. Yeah, I thought they did a great job of setting that all up. I didn't think that came out of nowhere. And like, so I don't know. It's, it's like a, it's become the community consensus that that's a bad scene somehow. And yeah, I don't really get it. It's it, a bit it's, too convenient. It's a like, bit uh, convenient, but I like convenient. it anyway. You know what? You know what's convenient? The way Lelouch says in that's, that exact moment. That's what I like, was thinking as well. Like what he says is super goofy, like cartoonishly goofy. Yeah, come on. Like, what what if do you I think I'm going to tell you to kill all of the Japanese? I would never yeah, do that. I know. I know. 
right? Yeah, so that part was a little bit convenient, right? But uh, yeah. in, the, in the terms of like the, the wider implications for the world, I thought it was cool because, again, in this show, they don't shy away from death, even of important characters that they build up up to this point. Whereas in a lot of anime, you see, you know, people come close to death, they get injured, but they don't actually die because it would be too tragic, etc. I think the that's why I really problem. like the anime that pulls the trigger. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. But what's it called? I think the biggest problem was it just didn't seem like something Lelouch would joke about or say. And it just like yeah. felt so forced to make a certain plot, something happen with the plot, you know? Well, it, it makes it better that his original mindset going in to meet Euphemia was he was going to tell Euphemia, he, with the Gias, he was going to command Euphemia to shoot him. So that if Zero gets shot, then they go to war. That was his mm. plan going in there and no one seems to remember that part nah, i but... don't <laughs> well you didn't even remember the lloyd bro well neither did i i have actually so code Geass is one of those anime i definitely need to rewatch because i've watched it like probably within the first 10 anime i watched ever you know so that was way too long ago yeah that, that's same for me but then i rewatched it like four more times so i did that with like, death note I... because i like the characters i love the ending i was satisfied with code Geass. i just never thought about it again yeah, and except I, for I every time we're on Rank Cafe, and I don't remember it. Death Note was like the big gateway anime for me in terms of when I was actually an adult, and then I think the second or third anime I saw was Code Geass right after Death Note because I, I went to some website or something that I was like similar anime to Death Note, and Code Geass got recommended, and I just remember it being amazing right away, and I was like, obviously it's different from Death Note, especially the fan service. Like Death Note has like no fan service, whereas Code Geass has plenty. But yeah, it's just such a classic that I loved it from the beginning, and I still love it today. It holds up really well. All right, yeah, speaking of things, speaking of things you love, Animac. Um, so Charlie rated Hunter Hunter a S, which <laughs> me, me, and Nux agree on, obviously. And he made yeah. a statement in his video. He was like something like, "Everyone thinks it's S tier," but then we have Animac who gives it a four to ten. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in seeing the full episode of the Rant Cafe podcast, link is in the description to our Spotify, which is free, by the way. We very much appreciate all the support you guys give us. We also have a link in the description to our Patreon. Have yourselves the most wonderful evening, and remember to stay weird, fam.